Uh, well, I'm actually into today's video. I'm a bit late doing today's video because it's my birthday today. I've been busy with family stuff uh, through this morning. Um, but we're going to have a quick look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. And then we've got the uh, monthly, free monthly forecast, I should say, from the JMA model. Now, I'd normally show you that um, the, the seasonal uh, model forecast, uh, but I do once a month. Um, but we'll have a quick sneak peek of it quick sneak peek at it uh, today and just see what it's shown for November, December and January. I think the seasonal model forecast is actually going to be a bit delayed this month because we're very late uh, getting all the seasonal models uh, updated so I don't think I'm going to be able to do the video this weekend and uh, let you see it on Sunday. It's probably going to have to be a week on Sunday uh, that you'll see the uh, seasonal model uh, roundup forecast um, for October and of course that's extending through into the uh, winter good and proper now but we'll have a quick sneak peek at the JMA uh, at the end of the video anyway um, but let's start off with weather coming up for the nearer term next uh, week to 10 days or so uh, we'll start off with the GFS temperature and rainfall ensembles quite an alarming looking chart this not necessarily from a temperature uh, perspective it looks like we're going to have a very warm spell coming up the red lines where we should be we're going to be above average uh, for the next week to 10 days at least and then eventually as we get through towards the end of October we do see uh, the temperature uh, ensemble mean starting to lower, so we're beginning to cool off a little bit as we go through towards the end of the month and start of November. We're only going back towards average, I think uh, cold in particular being shown up there, although that one uh, uh, outlier uh, of a member of the ensemble is quite cold there, the gold run. Um, but if you ignore that, basically we're going to be average to mild uh, for the next week to two weeks. But it is quite alarming, this chart, in terms of all the rainfall spikes look at all these rainbow spikes for the rest of october it looks like we're going to be in for a really wet old time but we've got actually a drier uh, slot coming along just at the moment but once we get through to the weekend and beyond that it looks like we're in for a proper wet spell one of the uh, i think this is probably going to turn out to be one of the wettest spells that we've had uh, certainly for uh, 2013 you probably have to go back to december 2012 for the last time we had such a extended period of wet weather and of course if this comes out right and we do get all of these rainfall events over the next couple of weeks uh, we are going to be seeing the rivers picking up by then despite hot summer uh, the rivers will be very quickly rising over the next couple of weeks so we have to be watching out uh, for some flooding now if we have a look at the generic charts with GFS first of all uh, this is starting off in a week's time Thursday the 24th of October and you'll not be surprised with what you just saw in the ensemble see that low pressure is going to be really really dominant at 980 millibars winds are from the southwest so it is going to remain very mild across the country as we saw on the temperature ensemble that this low pressure will be producing lots of heavy rain. As we run through to uh, Friday the 25th and then on uh, to the 10-day period, which is Sunday the 27th of October, uh, well, low pressure very much in control. Just the suggestion that high pressure is going to try and ridge into the south. Does it make it? Uh, no, it doesn't as we go through to Monday the 28th. The next area of low pressure is pushing through. But all the time, winds are from a southwesterly direction, indicated by the isobars. They're tightly packed, so it's going to be windy. Um, but a lot of rain coming in off the Atlantic on this morning's GFS run. Now the ECMWF, let's see what that's shown. Very much in agreement as you go through to a week's time, Thursday the 24th of October. Low pressure is firmly in control of the weather pattern and it remains in control through into Friday the 25th. There'll be showers, longer spells of rain, heavy rain too. Winds are from a southwesterly or even southerly direction almost on uh, this uh, ECMWF run. So it will be very mild, um, but it's generally very unsettled. Now as we go through to the day, the 10 period again, which is Sunday the 27th of October. Again, just a suggestion that high pressure is trying to ridge in uh, from the south. I'm not sure it'll make it because this area of low pressure will probably run through and flatten it off as it does on the GFS. But it's just possible that as we get to the very end of October, we could get some sort of build of high pressure that may settle things down and drive things out going out to the turn of the month. But uh, really, I think it's a very unsettled looking picture, certainly for the next week to 10 days. Then possibly right at the very very end um, the very very end of October and into start of November we could get a little bit of high pressure so let's have a look at those uh, JMA uh, charts for uh, the next three months this is taking us from November through December and into January as well this is just updated this morning I just want to show you this to give you a bit of a sneak peek because it's my birthday as I, say, I don't normally save this for the seasonal model roundup but why not have a quick look at it I'm going to start off with November 
Um, and this is where the British Isles is here, up in this top, uh, the top right-hand corner of the chart. Uh, and we're in a big, uh, we're under a big blue area in terms of 500 millibar heights for November. So that's showing an anomalous trough of low pressure sitting around the British Isles uh, for November. Does look uh, very unsettled if that's right. Does that uh, is that confirmed by the rainfall forecast for November? Well, yes, it is. There's the British Isles just there. We're in those blue colours, so a wetter uh, than average month is very much anticipated by the Japanese model um, in November. In terms of temperatures, we're coming out near normal, actually, average to mild in those creamy colours uh, just there. So not a particularly cold month uh, by any means, but it could be very, very unsettled. And the sea level pressure uh, distribution um, for November, again, we're in those blue curves, so that's indicated that in terms of sea level pressure, we've got low pressure really dominant through the course of November. So a wet uh, unsettled month is very much anticipated by the Japanese model uh, for November. Not cold, uh, but certainly a very unsettled month on the way, if that is right. Now, let's have a look at December and see what the model is showing for December. We'll start off again with the 500 millibar heights. And there we go. The uh, British Isles is just there. We've got average heights uh, for December. So that implies that we lose the trough of low pressure, uh, the, the anomalous trough that we've got in uh, November. And in December, the heights come up. There will be some unsettled conditions coming through at times, but probably not uh, the very wet and unsettled month that's anticipated uh, in November. In terms of the temperatures, uh, for December, where we're looking at near normal temperatures there in those cream colours, so no problems uh, with temperatures, certainly not too cold uh, going forward into uh, December. And now remember these are anomalies, so there will probably be cold weather at times. It is a winter month after all, so there's almost certainly going to be some cold weather at some point in December. But nothing extended uh, being signalled by uh, this particular uh, model. And in terms of the rainfall for December, it's coming out near normal again. So a very average sort of December uh, being signalled there by the J. M by the JMA model, I should say, in terms of the sea level uh, pressure anomaly. Again, we're looking at uh, their near normal. So very average throughout uh, rainfall, pressure, 500 millibar heights, and temperature. Uh, pretty much near normal uh, type conditions for December. Now let's finally have a quick look at January. I know that's probably the one that you're all interested in. If you're snow fans, you're hoping for a cold January. What's it showing for uh, January? Starting off with the 500 millibar heights again. It's showing below average heights around the British Isles and extending into central parts of Europe. Now that's an unsettled looking signal. It could be cold. It depends on the exact track of the jet stream. What's the temperature forecast for January? Well, actually, it's going for a cold of an average month there. We're in most blue <laughs> colour, so it is anticipating temperatures to be under the average uh, for January. Um, and in terms of the rainfall, it's coming out... Uh, there we go, it's coming out near normal in the north, perhaps a little bit above average in the south, that's precipitation, I should say, but it's showing us rainfall, but I'm saying precipitation because in a colder than average month, with the south uh, probably wetter than the north, um, maybe some of that could be wintry, maybe you could talk about some snow uh, with that famous last words, of course. In terms of the sea level pressure uh, distribution for January, it's showing high pressure, uh, interestingly, to be sitting out to the west. You can't go up to Greenland with this, but I would suspect there's probably some sort of extension of the high pressure up into Greenland, and it's showing low pressure uh, over Central Europe, and the pressure for the British Isles is actually near normal. It's on the 500 millibar highs, so we're sort of under an anomalous trend off, um, but that trough is probably more centred towards the south and the east of the country. So that's perhaps not too bad a signal, uh, to be honest, uh, if you're looking for some cold weather uh, this winter. So that's the breakdown of the uh, JMA model for the next three months. Very interesting. Looks like November's going to be really unsettled if this is right with some pretty wet weather, it's above average in terms of the rainfall, but temperatures are near normal. December, there's no real signal for December, it looks very average. Now whether that's right, whether the model just hasn't quite got the signal yet for December, 
I'm not sure, I can't really say, but uh, if we anticipate that we are in for an average uh, sort of December, that would allow some cold snaps coming through at times, but also some mild snaps. You know, the typical thing that you get in an average December, there will be some colder snaps, also be some milder weather. And then January, very interesting for January. It does look as though it could be quite a cold month based on that. We perhaps a trough somewhere to the south of the east. Um, we could be on the cold side of the jet, with the south perhaps getting more precipitation than the north. And if it's in a colder airstream, some of that could be wintry. So from a cold perspective, January is definitely the most interesting month. Otherwise, not a great deal going on uh, for November and December in terms of cold. Um, but some really wet weather possible in November. And of course, we're in a really wet spell now for the rest of October it does look very unsettled. That's it for now, hope you found the video interesting um, and that's it for now, thanks for watching.